My dad was a pretty violent pedophile, and also extremely charming, and was a certified genius. Nobody suspected him of doing anything. I myself honestly had no idea until he and my mother divorced him for unrelated reasons, and I had to visit him in his new apartment with my little brother. He had no roommates or girlfriends. We were completely alone with him. My brother wasn't his type, but he would hurt him to get me to comply. He was very good at keeping us silent about everything. We haven't ever even spoken to each other about what we went through, though since therapy, it's pretty easy to type it out anonymously. I still have only verbally discussed it with my wife and one other person while hammered. I realized, looking back, that a few of my friends were terrified of him even before the divorce for what I thought was no reason. Nobody would have believed us, even with the physical evidence. He was just too good with people. Later in therapy as an adult, I realized that all of our pets disappeared within a month of bringing them home, and there was never an explanation. I have a lot of theories there, but no proof. He was diagnosed as a true sociopath later on from what I've heard from my grandma. Don't know the validity of that statement because it's secondhand from a woman that isn't entirely sound herself, but I believe it. He lives with my equally insane grandfather, grandma's ex-husband, when he isn't locked up. Fortunately, meth really did a number on him. He finally started looking as scary as he is, and his brain was just fried last time I saw him over a decade ago. No longer smart or attractive, and he is isolated from the world. Recently, his dad has tried to reconnect us. That landed me back in therapy, as every day, I was afraid they would find out where I was from some unwise relative. I lived in Oklahoma, and there was this one guy who worked for the church I went to. He played backup guitar in the church band and would teach music at the elementary school. His wife was also the principal. Anyway, he had a good family. His eldest son was in Yale, I think, and the school was actually about to win an award for safest school. His wife went to DC to accept the award, and while she was gone, he was arrested for apparently fondling and fingering the little girls in his class. That made some unfortunate sense, since he was known to show a lot of movies in his class, which always seemed weird to the staff. I did tech work there as a class, and some teachers complained he did it far too often. Turns out, this was when he would do it. Turn off the lights, sit in the back with a couple little girls, and yeah. His son took his mother's maiden name. My mom knew him well, and he used to preach at her that the metal music I enjoyed at the time was going to send me to hell. It used to really piss her off. He had that creepy vibe. But for the most part, that was just due to his looks. Socially awkward smile, huge glasses. I always thought he was too Christian. Nope pedophile apparently. I worked for a guy who became a best friend. He was a very skilled carpenter, licensed contractor, husband and father for about eight years. He was a great guy but often kind of creepy. Like, hey, I know where there's an 18 year old hooker who will suck your dick for 20 bucks. I'll buy kind of creepy. I was always, no thanks but never thought anything real bad about it since it would have been consensual. Until he was arrested for 36 counts of child molestation on another really good friend's daughter from the time she was 8 until 16. Nobody saw that coming. He got 36 years, but won an appeal claiming the acts occurred before the mandatory minimums and got 16. He will be out in 5. My parents once lived in an old beach house that had been split up into four units, two upstairs, two downstairs, and a shack out the back. They lived upstairs and one of the downstairs units was rented to a single guy. He went to the same school as me, but was two grades ahead of me. This was back in the early 80s in a somewhat sleepy seaside town. He was gay and would often surround himself with young surfer dudes. Apparently he would supply them with pot and they would, well, to be honest, I would just be guessing. I'm sure some of them would sleep with him, but like I said, it's just a guess. 
My parents didn't mind him. He seemed harmless enough. I knew something else about him, though, that I never told them, mainly because I was young, like nine, when I found out the darker side, but this was something like 15 years ago, so I guess I just figured he was harmless, and what happened when I was younger was just kids being kids. He was only three years older than me, after all. Anyway, turns out it wasn't all that harmless. He had been playing around with surfers that were way too young to be doing what he wanted them to do, so he got a visit from the local police. They suggested it might be an extremely good idea if he was to pack up his stuff and move to a new town, preferably in another state. Otherwise, there was a good chance that his comfortable life would become decidedly less comfortable. I guess he decided that this would be what his life would be like from now on, or maybe he felt guilty, or maybe he was just tired of it all. So a couple days later, he went for a walk into the surrounding bushland with a gun and put an end to the whole sorry mess. My folks didn't really understand why he did it. I don't think they knew what it was he was doing. I knew, though, and I guess a part of me felt a bit sorry for him. These sorts of things are not choices people make. No one chooses to be strayed or gay or attracted to kids. It's just what happens, and you deal with the hand you're dealt. I should point out that I think it's wrong for pedophiles to act out on their attraction to kids, but it must be hell knowing that you're like that. Anyway, there was no big news story. There was no investigative journalist trying to get to the bottom of it. It was just a quiet tragedy in a sleepy little town that few people knew had happened, and even fewer knew why it happened. My little sister and I went to the same school. When I was in about 7th grade and she was in 3rd, we got a new gym teacher. Now I didn't take gym, so I only encountered him a few times, but he just didn't seem right to me. Other girls would tell me how he touches their butts or peeks in the locker room and the principal wouldn't do anything. I asked my sister if she liked him and she goes, yeah, he tickles us and plays with our hair and gives us piggyback rides, etc. I told her to never let him touch her again, ever. In, I think, 2014, he was arrested for raping a little girl and is still in prison. Fuck that guy, and fuck the principal for not listening to any of the students. In the early 2000s, the local church vicar, who had worked at the local church for 25 years, had finally decided to retire. As a Church of England vicar, he was allowed to marry and have a family, but had apparently never shown any interest in that department. Obviously, people have preferences, and there's nothing explicitly wrong with a man remaining single. However, something odd happened at his retirement party. I was nine years old and dragged along by my parents, so was my six-year-old friend Christopher. The vicar had always had a bizarre tendency to totally ignore women and little girls, but would dote on little boys. Anyway, he's sitting down at a table and requests my friend's mom to put Christopher on his lap. He hugged Christopher and then started tracing Christopher's lips with his finger. The vicar suddenly turned to my friend's mom and said, When I move to Oxford, you must send little Chrissy up to stay with me one weekend. He's such a beautiful little boy. Christopher's mom flipped the hell out and abruptly pulled him off the vicar's lap. All the parents were shocked and a weird hush fell over the room. I remember it all so vividly. So, this is my first post here. Hope this is a good fit. I've lurked and read a lot of creepy encounters here, so, so often people will mention how they give off a creeper vibe. It would be really nice if they all did, because this guy didn't. So for background, this guy, we'll call him Pete, is the brother of one of my neighbors. I'm 34, he's around my age, and my daughter is 8 and plays with the neighbor's kids sometimes. Neighbors are relatively normal people, yeah, they party a bit, but so do I. Pete seemed as normal as anyone. He didn't have the creeper vibe at all. No sweatpants and tank top with random stains. He didn't drive a creepy van, never made any inappropriate comments. In fact, he kept a neat goatee and was quite well dressed. A few times I've met him, we've drank and smoked together, 
and he just seemed like an all-around decent guy. Then one day, the cops are there. They take Pete away in cuffs. He didn't live there, but I guess they had a warrant and knew to visit there, so that's where they got him. I figured it was probably no big deal. Maybe a drug charge or outstanding warrants for some petty stuff. I don't ask because it hardly seems polite to say, Hey, what did your brother get arrested for? But it's public record, and I knew his name, so of course I checked. The charge was about as bad as it could possibly be. Child rape. Victim under the age of 13. What in the actual fuck? He didn't seem like the type of guy at all. And I guess that's what really creeps me out. Sick, twisted pedophiles that could easily be mistaken for a normal person. As the father of a young girl, that scares me more than anything else. The creeper vibe just wasn't there. Anyway, he was convicted and will die in prison. So, seemingly normal super creep kitty diddler, let's never meet again. We won't, and more importantly, no other child will ever meet you again.